So we had an earlier lesson on just polynomial operations in like a really basic form of each polynomial. But this lesson is on, um, we're going to specifically refer to power functions for a while, and then just everything we do is going to be in function notation. So as far as the operations go, most of those are going to be the same. Um, it's just going to be the notation that they originally exist in that you're going to see a little bit of difference. So let's start with, hold on, lost my cursor. There we go. So here we're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and we're also going to do division today. We left that off in the last lesson because of the uh, interesting ideas that are going to follow when we start dividing larger polynomials. But for power functions and smaller polynomials, we're just going to set up the division. We'll talk about um, something else we have to discuss. So adding two functions together would just simply be adding two functions together. So this time f and g are listed above. There's function f and here's function g. And if I were to add them together, I would just simplify as much as I could, which in this case would just be adding the x terms together. So we'd end up with our new function of 3x plus 1. And the domain, because that's a polynomial, is all reals, so negative infinity to infinity. There's no sort of restriction on the domain as we're going to refer to them today. We'll see when there is a restriction. Polynomials don't have them. Subtraction is similar in setup, however, when you subtract g of x, we have to remember that we're going to subtract the entire function g of x. So we're going to subtract the x and we're going to subtract the 1. So just one moment. Sorry, I had a sneezing break. Tis the season and all that. All right, so we're subtracting the x and we're subtracting the 1. So this becomes a 2x and then a minus x and a minus 1. And when I collect my like terms this time, I get a 1x and a minus 1. Still a polynomial though, so your domain is negative infinity to infinity. Now f of x times g of x, f of x is 2x, which you can put in parentheses if you'd like. But the g of x has to be put in parentheses because it is a polynomial of more than one term, meaning we're going to have to distribute 2x to each of the x and the plus 1. So this becomes 2x squared plus 2x. So now we have a quadratic polynomial, but the domain is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. And finally, we get something a little unique. The setup for division today is going to be really basic. We're just going to write in the order in which it appears. That's not what it said. It said 2x, f of x is in the numerator. And then g of x is x plus 1. It's in the denominator. So there's no simplification that you're going to do as far as the division fractions today. But we do have to consider the domain for this fraction. I cannot have a zero in the denominator of any fraction because that would create an undefined expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my denominator, which is x plus 1, and I'm going to tell myself that it cannot equal zero, like an anti-equation. And if I solve that anti-equation by subtracting the 1 over, I find out that x can't be negative 1. And that's what I'm going to write for my domain. I'm just going to say x cannot be negative 1. There's a much fancier way to write that domain. In interval notation, and we're just going to skip that for algebra 2, and we'll save that for college algebra and pre calc next year. And we have two new functions now. Here's f of x, and here's g of x this time. And if we're adding them together, we have 2x to the third plus negative 6x squared. And as far as like terms go, there really aren't any like terms to combine here because I have a cubic and a quadratic. So the only thing you could do is instead of saying plus a negative, um, we could just say that's 2x to the third minus 6x squared, and that would be the most simplified version. The domain is all reals again because those are polynomials. Um, there's no restrictions. So for this one, 2x to the third minus negative x, 6x x squared. Again, they're not like terms, but I could simplify that double negative action and call this 2x to the third plus 6x squared. Again, the domain is all reals. If I reverse the order of addition, I don't think that's going to do anything to my problem other than it's going to start off with the negative 6 in the front. So addition, same answer. But I don't think that's true for subtraction because subtraction doesn't have what we call the commutative property. So if you were to begin with the negative 6x squared and then try to subtract the 2x to the third, that's actually your answer. Um, there's no simplification that can happen. You can rewrite the order if you'd like, negative 2x to the third minus 6x squared. But what you might notice is f minus g versus g minus f, they are opposites of each other. 
They're additive inverses of each other, if you want to call it that way. Um, and that's typical for subtracting and then subtracting in the wrong order. Sometimes kids tell me, like, they think they got the question right, but it doesn't quite match the answer key. Um, and if it's the opposite answer, usually what happens is they subtract it in the wrong order. So, new functions, very similar. We have f and g. Um, we're going to do addition in both directions, subtraction in both directions, and we're going to see if that's any different. So, f plus g. And we do have some like terms this time to collect, so negative 1x plus 3 is my simplified answer. When I subtract, I'm clearly going to get a different answer. Let's see how different. Negative 2x, this time we're subtracting, and this is where I have to be careful because x plus 3 is multiple terms. I'm going to have to remember to distribute the subtraction sign to not just the x, but also to the 3. So this becomes, if you want to take an intermediate step, negative 2x minus x minus 3, and then when you collect like terms, negative 3x minus 3. It's usually the one that the kids mess up the most because of the distribution of the subtraction. Everyone tries to be cool and do it in their head, and uh, it's not always a great idea. So f plus g is going to be the same as g plus f, so I'm just going to rewrite that answer there. g minus f, however, is a different story. We're going to um, start off with x plus 3, which is g. Then we're going to subtract f, which was negative 2x to the, no, oh, not third, hello, I'm making that up. Uh, so we do have a bit of simplification here. I have double negative, which means that's going to become positive. So I have x plus 3 plus 2x. And then if I collect my like terms, I get 3x plus 3. Which again, I want to point out, f minus g compared to g minus f, they are just opposites of each other. Everyone has the opposite sign. All right, here comes some power functions your way. Ready? New functions, 3x, and then x to the 1 4th power. Now, first thing I want to remind you about x to the 1 4th power is the same thing as the fourth root of x. So we have a radical to consider, and because it's an even root, whatever is underneath that radical, um, it cannot be negative. Wow, that's really ugly handwriting, sorry. It could be 0, um, it could be some funky fraction, it just can't be a negative number because that would produce imaginary numbers, and then as much as you loved imaginary numbers, we're just not going to consider them here in this unit. So if I take f of x and I multiply it by g of x, that's 3x times x to the 1 4th power. Well, as far as simplification goes, I notice that I have two x's that I could use exponent properties on to try to combine them. So I have 3 as a coefficient, and then I'm supposed to, remember the rules here is, we're going to add those exponents together, so 4 fourths plus 1 fourth is 5 fourths, which you could do on your calculator if you wanted to. Um, that is my simplified version. However, I, the x to the 5 fourths, remember, that's the fourth root of x to the fifth power. So I still have that issue with the radical. So what I'm going to say for domain is that this thing underneath the radical, which is x, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. That is one way to say domain. The other way to say domain is that x can be from 0 to infinity, but I'm going to include 0 with a bracket. So that's another way to indicate, just as long as you don't use something negative, you're within the domain of that function. f of x divided by g of x is a little more complicated. Um, it will simplify, so if I set up f of x over g of x, I still have to use exponent rules. This time I'm supposed to subtract the exponents, so keeping my 3 coefficient, 1 minus 1 fourth is x to the 3 fourths now. Um, this is a little confusing, so hang with me. I'm still going to have that issue with domain of needing non-negative numbers because of the fourth root, but because your original problem was set up with that fourth root also in the denominator, I can no longer consider zero to be a friendly number, because if I used zero and I plugged it into this original setup, I would be dividing by zero, which we know is an undefined expression. So for here, you have to tell me that my number has to be just straight up positive. It can't even be zero. So you can say x is greater than zero, or you could write domain as parenthesis zero to infinity. So the major difference between those two questions as far as the domain goes is because we also have the restriction of having a denominator that can't be zero in addition to having the radical that can't be negative. Now I have more restrictions on my domain. But the good news is those are the only two times you'll have restrictions on your domain for algebra two. If you have a denominator, it can't be zero. But if you have an even root, it can't be negative. So that's all you have to remember and keep in mind. 
Here we have some new functions. Actually, I think they're old functions. We're just doing different operations. So f of x times g of x would be negative 2x times the entire function g of x, which is x plus 3. So we're going to simplify that by distributing the negative 2x. So negative 2x squared minus 6x. And I get a lovely polynomial. It doesn't have a denominator. It doesn't have a root that's even. So there's going to be no restrictions on my domain. That is ugly. Sorry about that. Negative infinity to infinity. All right, now we're going to set up a fraction where I take f of x to the numerator and we're going to divide it by g of x in the denominator. You're not going to be able to simplify these polynomials. We're going to learn in the, like two units from now when we can simplify these. These aren't going to simplify. Um, however, we do have a domain issue. Um, get my face out of the way. Face. All right. <laughs> so because I don't have an even root, but I do have a denominator now. And remember, my denominator, this dude cannot equal 0. So I'm going to set up that anti-equation x plus 3 cannot equal 0. And if I solve that anti-equation, x cannot be negative 3. That's what I'm going to write down here for domain. x can be anything you want as long as it's not negative 3. It could be negative 487. It doesn't matter as long as it's not negative 3. All right, let's see what other trouble we can get into here in function operations. Oh. This is a new operation. You probably have no understanding of this whatsoever, so hang with me. This is called composition. We're going to be plugging one function into another. Um, this is used a lot in programming and manufacturing because this is kind of like what life is. You're going to apply one thing to a product and then another thing. Um, these are two different notations that you can use. This is read as f of g of 2, and this is affectionately referred to as log 2. So it, they mean the exact same thing. It's a composition of one function into another function with a, a number plugged into it. There's other types of compositions that you're going to learn in your next math class, but for us, we're just going to be composing it numbers. So what we're going to do, and you have to be able to understand either notation here, you start on the inside of the problem, and I actually prefer this notation right here. So if we start on the inside of the problem, it says g of 2. So that's a really fancy way of saying plug in 2 in for function g. So here's function g. If I were to plug in a 2 into that function, I'd get 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So this and this are the same thing. So now, if I kind of scribble that out, it's telling me to take 3 and plug it into function f. So that's my next step. I'm going to take function f, plug in that number I just got 3 into function f, and let's see what happens. Well, here's function f. 3 times something, and we're supposed to plug in a 3. Coincidentally, those are the same numbers. It's not always going to happen that way. So we get 9. This final number we get, this is our answer. So it's a two-step process. Um, plugging into the inner function first, getting a new number to evaluate, evaluating the next function at that guy. So again, I like this first notation a little better. If you want to stick with me, I'm going to use this notation. But it says start with f of 3. So, oops, wrong color, loser. f of 3. So function f is 3 times 3. Hey, we just found that. Wasn't that 9? And then it says, forget that. I want you to now plug this guy into function g. So function g evaluated at 9 would be 2 times 9 minus 1. Uh, 18 minus 1 is 17. So this last number we get. That is our answer. I know, it's kind of crazy because there's numbers all over the place. Um, you might want to pause the video and redo those questions in colors because, yeah, it's a lot to look at. All right, so we composed into each function, but you can actually compose a function into itself, so that's fun. Uh, f of f of negative 2. So you start on the inside, and you figure out what f of negative 2 is. So that would be 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. So now it says, forget this. I want you to plug in a negative 6. And then what's kind of weird about this one is you go back into function f. So, boop, back into function f. Um, so f of negative 6 is 3 times negative 6, which is negative 18. And that is our final answer. I should consistently use my colors here, huh? 18, negative 18, final answer. All right, and then if you feel like it, we can go g to g to g. All right, so g of negative 4 would be 
2 times negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. So take that negative 9, forget this, plug it back into function g. So g of negative 9 gives me, I think these are kind of fun, but you know, I'm weird. All right, 2 times negative 1, no, 2 times negative 9, negative 18 minus 1 is negative 19. So there is your final answer. Ooh, good times. All right, um, this next section here is just kind of a review of everything we just covered. So I give you two new functions. I want you to add them, subtract them, multiply and divide them. Give domain restriction if there is one. And then also compose in various orders at certain values. All right, let's do this. Function f, function g. Let me switch in colors on you. All right, function f. So x squared plus g, which is x minus 3. And there's actually no simplification we can do there. So that is my answer. It's a polynomial. There's no radical that's even. There's no denominator, so there's no domain restriction. All right, very similar, except now we're going to be subtracting function g. So please be careful that you distribute the subtraction to both the x and the minus 3. So that's going to give me x squared minus x negative negative will turn this to a plus 3. Again, no domain restriction, so don't bother writing one unless you want to write negative infinity to infinity for the domain itself. All right, x squared times g. Again, usage of parentheses is key because we will have to distribute. So this is x to the third minus 3x squared polynomial, so there's no restriction. All right, f over g x squared over x minus 3. This time, there is going to be a restriction, because remember, x minus 3, that denominator, cannot be 0. So if I solve this anti-equation, I find out that for my domain, x can't be 3. Everything else is okay. So this is my answer, but that's my domain restriction. And then f of g of 1. Start on the inside and find g of 1. So that would be 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And then take that number and plug that into f. So, oh, be careful. f is x squared. Make sure you're using parentheses around that. You're going to get a 4. So here is my final answer, 4. And then just for good measure, f of negative 5 first. Again, use those parentheses. Negative 5 squared is 25. And then we're going to take that 25. And we're going to plug it into the function g. Oh, I ran out of space. All right, so 25 minus 3 better known as 22. Good times. Enjoy.